Hi everyone, my name is James, and this is a development vlog for my game, The Answer Is Never, that I've been developing in my spare time. Um, and today I wanted to make a short video to talk about my art pipeline and the authoring process, specifically the, what would typically be the materialization or texturing process of these art assets. I have chosen to take a textureless approach, so none of the 3D content in the game will use any 2D images or texture maps to produce any of the materialization effects, and I will rely solely on geometry for those effects and vertex coloring. I'm in the process of validating that this will work across all types of assets in the game. Uh, for the time being, that validation uh, has worked for the environment and prop assets and structures and, I need, and characters and I need to move on to foliage and trees. So what we're looking at here right now is my viewport in 3D Studio Max 2023. Uh, and this vertex coloring approach is functional in Maya, Blender, Modo, uh, all of the common 3D softwares out there that folks work with support vertex coloring. So this is not gated just to 3ds Max. And in fact, I did most of my early vertex coloring work in Maya primarily. So what we look at on this bike here is it does appear to be materialized or even textured to a degree uh, in that we can make out all of the different material properties for maybe the red paint on the bike, the metallic property of the rims, the dark rubber property of the tires, and we have enough detail really to make out those different material properties for this bike. This reads as a BMX bike and it does have no textures. So I am working with editable polys. Everything is merged here. Now this may become a dynamic vehicle that the player rides in the future. And in 3ds Max, what you do to do the vertex coloring, uh, what you need here is a modifier down here called vertex paint, and it'll bring up this little vertex paint toolkit. And you can go in here and you can select by the vertex. You can actually select by elements or face as well, elements being like the entire piece of geometry, like that tube. And you can paint it with a brush or erase it or drop an entire color in here. So say I wanted to make it this ridiculous blue, I paint drop that, and now we have colored the vertexes for this bit of geometry, uh, that color blue. Even though we did this at the face level, it's really assigning this data at these little blue dots here. These are the vertices where the geometry connects. And that right there basically gives me enough information to say that the color of that bike at that point is blue. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is remove this. There is also another approach here where we can sort of select by element, and then we can go down in our little stack hierarchy here, properties, and we can also, it's usually a little bit faster to do it this way, and we can color the bike from here. Uh, the cool thing about this is, is even though I've done this selection at the um, face level, that you can go in here and select at different component levels, vertices and all of that. And this, at this point here, I have selected it at the uh, face level. I will convert that to a vertex selection uh, by converting with the little selection tool right here. And you can go in here and still modify this. You can add different colors. You can... Um, Usually what I'll use this for is sort of lightening. We can do like shading effects. So we can lighten the top part of that bike where it would just generally have more light. We can also shade the bottom. We could do any effect that we want involving the interpolation of the colors across the vertices. We can also add um, divisions across this geometry so that we have more vertices to color. Now that is, that is what some folks consider one of the limitations of vertex coloring or one of the cons on using vertex colors is that it's bound directly to how many vertices are in the geometry. So if you're going to take this approach and use vertex coloring, you must know that you will have to uh, increase your burden or overhead of vertex data, i.e. use more vertices and more edges to produce some of these effects that you want. And you can see this in the tire here where I've cut lines and, and bits in this geometry and I've used a stylistic decision here to allow for a hard edge on that, but I can literally um, soften this edge and I can kind of prove that out by selecting a few of these vertices. We will grab that color there and then we've sort of softened that edge on that part and we still get a little bit of highlight up there. So you have to be very intentional about where you cut that geometry for these color effects. The orange part of the sidewall of the tire is a really good example of 
doing that. I, I, I know that some folks consider that a con, but I actually see this as an artistic benefit that I can basically do any arbitrary edge loop and determine exactly where one color gradiates and another color. It, it, to me, it's extremely powerful uh, through the limitation. Now, one helper thing that I use here is I establish uh, a, just a typical sort of color palette. On um, These are going to be the core colors that I think this asset is going to need to use here. And then I can just use the eyedropper here and sort of pick from this color palette. And so these are the core colors that are all used on this bicycle. So I don't need to guess for consistency if another part needs to match the red paint on this part. Um, I don't need to worry about matching the consistency of the color because I have this constant color palette here. And you can, this is very much like what folks would do in pixel art or when they take the what the, what is referred to as the lazy UVs approach, where you basically put your UVs in one of these quadrants, and you'd use a texture map to do something similar. Um, so that's exactly where I uh, uh, grab my colors from, is this swatch palette here that I create ahead of time. Sometimes the colors come intuitively through the painting, and then I add uh, a swatch into this by just grabbing one and duplicating it. And then, you know, especially if... I want to do something like create some shading effect and I need like a slightly darker version of gray for shading. I think that this is extremely powerful and it turns out it looks pretty good in Unity if you're using the right shader too. So in brevity on this video, I'm gonna move over to um, Unity now and a couple of these assets that I started working with the vertex coloring, like this is one on the fire hydrant, still needs some work. I don't like how there's some vibrancy lost in here. And again, I just need to go in there and bump, pump those colors up. There's a lot of dullness that almost hinges over to the side of green. Some of this is coming from the shader, but the vertex colors can, can definitely help with that. I think the trash can is a good representation of how this stylistically looks. So again, there are no texture maps on this at all. All of these color differences and everything are done through the vertex colors. And anything that might have been represented in a normal map does have to be cut in with geometry. Now I am working around this to a degree by floating geometry where we would, it's basically like a decal system. So with the decal system and floating geometry, you can vertex color some of these floating bits a little bit differently to create inset shading or shading that is embossed out. Actually, it'll be a better scene for me to go to an interior. This is my exterior test scene. So this is a scene where basically I'm validating um, different assets for the far camera as you explore this world at large scale. But I think a better representation would be to go over to uh, what we're doing in the interior. And all of these assets that are colored in here now are done through vertex colors. So this is exactly what this bike looks like. I'm gonna go in here and just hit play so we can sort of preview this in the build. And uh, the bike was probably the first asset that I had sort of tested this approach against. And I had to look it over and sort of review, like does this read properly as a bike from this era, right? It also needs to read, the game takes place in 1986. So everything in this aesthetic sort of also needs to harken back to, um, that time period as well and a lot of that is in the geometry but a lot of it is also in the colors and how they're rendered and so i applied my shader to this and of course there are no textures so all of this coloring and detail and everything is coming straight from the vertex colors that map over into the shader and when i looked at the bike i was really happy with this and i thought this is this is a perfect aesthetic for what i need this is a very narrative driven game so the art needs to be beautiful, but the art doesn't need to be noisy or distracting or overly detailed. Um, the boom box is also colored with vertex colors, as well as this old telephone, the old gaming console, as well as the TV. Even the shading effects on the television screen there are done in vertex colors. Um, we're not going to dive too heavy to it in this video, but you can also use the alpha channel of vertex colors for transparency. So when we start discussing about, well, how do we handle transparent objects, there is Vertex Alpha for transparency as well. However, I don't really foresee that in this project I'm going to be using, even in my foliage, that I'm going to be using too much in the way of transparency. I'm going to rely on geometry uh, mainly. And this is the skateboard. Obviously, I think that this needs a little bit of polish because there's a little bit of too high a specularity on some of these elements here. 
But yeah, it's very cool that all of this was in the vertex colors and there are no textures here. One of the sort of benefits of using geometry for things for a lot of this stuff is like it's super crisp and sharp and you're not resolution bound except for however many edges or vertices you put in it. Um, again, this is one of these assets that I need to revisit and we need to get some transparency, some holes sort of punched in here to these speaker grills because there is a data underneath that needs to show through. Uh, but all in all, I was pretty happy that that looked that looked like a relatively decent enough approximation to me considered when in comparison to the one that I had spent several hours uh, in Substance Painter creating a really nice uh, boombox texture map, which looks looked great. Uh, but in consideration of this camera view, that beautiful Substance Painter, um, I'm going to hit play and walk around it. All of that texture information that was done on the edge wear and all of that in Substance Painter was just lost in this camera view. Um, and so this camera view also facilitates another element, which is that added overhead of having to say I needed to punch holes in that speaker grill to produce those holes as geometry because I don't have a texture map for the alpha. Um, this constrained view where the camera frustum here is only allowing this much geometry in any given view does not allow for an expansive wide view of the world. So I can get away with a much higher density of geometry in this single scene. And that was one of the driving factors of this camera view um, to sort of constrain in this isometric perspective what is drawn on screen because I want this world to be extremely detailed and I want everything to be interactable. And so there were sacrifices that I needed to make memory-wise elsewhere. And I thought that textures were a really good concession, the texture memory. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with, I'm pretty pr pleased with the rendering quality of these. Um, I think the shader can do, the shader can do a lot more than what I'm already doing, but these elements, um, let's just preface it this, let's just put it this way. Um, like something like this in Substance Painter would have taken a couple of hours of refining. I probably would have had something up and going in an hour or two, um, but it would have been several hours of just getting that right look or refining that detail on this. Like this um, game console had been textured in Substance Painter in a first pass, and it took me more than a day of working on that and getting all those details just perfect in there. Whereas this approximation right here from this camera view was more than enough detail that I needed to tell this story. And the vertex coloring approach to this took about 35 minutes. So we were at a 70 or 80% reduction in time it took to, this is hilarious, awesome game. Um, it's I, I can't wait to put the details in here, but there's a lot of detail missing on this. This was just a first pass to see how these elements uh, look, render, and work, you know, kind of from this camera angle, how will they shade, and how does this vertex coloring approach hold up? And I'm very pleased with this aesthetic, and I think everything in the world, if it just keeps this consistent uh, rendering style, like, we'll have a great consistency across the world, and it'll also have sort of that more simplified vintage retro vibe that suits that mid-1980s aesthetic. Um, yeah, so I think that that's great. Um, and in full disclosure or transparency here, what I have used for the shader, for the shader effects on all of these objects is the flat kit. Um, and let me see if I can see if I can pull this up. This has been really great. Uh, the developer support has been really great. There was some issues with the newer version of URP. Um, but this was an immediate purchase for a really cheap price here. Um, I didn't have to do any effort on creating shader graphs to, and spending hours and hours trying to get all of these extra features. So if I wanted to do a pivot to outlines or something a little more complicated with more layers, uh, we can see as he's cycling through all the different features of the shader that all of these different things are extra engineering effort. Yeah, some of these things like this totally... Um, sold me on the rendering aesthetic of this. Uh, the first tree, Firewatch, games like that are in my um, confluence as representative aesthetics that are comparable products. And that's exactly when I saw this shader demo from this, this is exactly that same rendering aesthetic. And so for a relatively cheap price, 
I was able to go in here and integrate and purchase the shader with a ton of features. And that is the shader that we're using here. It is actually a really, it is not a behemoth shader with an unbelievable amount of features that becomes unweldy for you to handle. I, I like that this developer included these collapsible elements in here and that everything is a flag that you turn on or off if you want that feature. I think grad height gradients are something I'm gonna wanna do across all of these elements at some point too, but I can just turn these on and then at that point, uh, they will just work in that feature. So, um, what else? Um, there are advanced lighting features on this, but he does have an uh, enable vertex colors flag on here. And that's what is allowing me to, okay, the boom box is what we had selected. That's why that didn't, I was, I was thinking to myself, why didn't the outline show up on the bicycle? But it was because we had the boom box. That may be a very interesting aesthetic choice to add that in. There is the ability to add in normals and albedos. I'm very tempted to bring in normal maps to punch out some of this detail, but I may consider that at a later time. I don't think that it's absolutely even necessary to continue developing the logic side of this and the narr narrative side and to tell this story. I just, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think that that granular of detail is needed there. Um, then I, Again, the next thing that I want to try to validate here would be the foliage. So bushes, grasses, and trees. His shader, the developer's shader on FlatKit supports this. So I need to just get into Speed Tree, which I've also purchased a license of, and um, get in there and bring in some bushes and bring in some trees. Vertex color those and um, bring those in. Uh, hopefully this might be helpful as a useful tool for some other folks out there working on games that want to go for a more stylized aesthetic. Um, I very much enjoy this working this way and I very much enjoy this aesthetic. So thank you for watching and until the next devlog, I will see you later.